I like Spurgeon. Spurgeon lets me exercise my King Jameth, <laughs> or as they say, ye olden English. You know, oftentimes people want some new and fresh, relevant idea, and they jump on the latest craze or the latest fad or fashion, and they put their faith and stock and trade in all of what they just now discovered in some new thing, as opposed to sometimes recognizing that God has contained everything in his word. That whenever you see a new thing, there's a rule of thumb that we say in, in prophecy that if it's new, <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of rules of thumb that, that we play with in a prophecy and scripture, but usually if it's new, it's wrong, and if it's old, it's right, because things that haven't had time to be tested and proven true often find themselves in the long run not fulfilling what they promise that they are, that a lot of times some new idea comes along and someone is making a religious paper in order to be published in a journal. And so they come up with an idea, and then they throw it out there, and then the religious people go, ooh, and ah, and they get their name published in the journal or in a collection somewhere, so they become recognized, and they have to do that in order for their education process to be validated, and they get a THD, a PhD, or some kind of title assigned to their name because they published in a certain periodical something that's acceptable to the community of scholars as opposed to what the Bible says. When it's new, be careful. Most of the time, if it's new, <laughs> it's going to be questionable. Now, that's not to say that we don't discover and validate what's old, because we do find that science has proven the scriptures true, and we can rest assured in them that God has spoken. But whenever we try to change what has been accepted for centuries of what Jesus said into something we want to fit for ourselves, we're walking on shaky ground, and it's best to read some of the classics and see what they had to say and compare them to today and see what you might find that Jesus is saying to you, which is why we have some classics and some modern in devotional in order to determine not just for ourselves what God is saying but to allow God to speak to us in a relevant and prevalent way that would be personal to us so in Spurgeon exceeding great and precious promises second Peter if you would know experimentally the preciousness of the promises enjoy them in your own heart and meditate much upon them there are promises which are like grapes in the wine press. If you tread them, the juice will flow. Thinking over the hallowed words will often be the prelude to their fulfillment. While you are musing upon them, the boom which you are seeking will insensibly come to you. Many a Christian who has thirsted for the promise has found favor which it ensured, gently distilling into his soul, even while he has been considering the divine record and he is rejoiced that ever he was led to lay the promise near his heart, just by thinking upon it. But besides meditating upon the promises, seek in your soul to receive them as being the very words of God. Speak to your soul thus, and treat it as, if I were dealing with the man's promise, I should carefully consider the ability and the character of the man who had made the agreement with me. So with the promise of God. My eye must not be so much fixed upon the greatness of the mercy that may stagger me as upon the greatness of the promiser that will cheer me. In other words, he who is promised is greater than the promise. My soul, it is God, even thy God, the God that cannot lie, who speaks to you. The word of his which thou art now considering in as true as his own existence. He is God unchangeable. He has not altered the thing which has gone out of his mouth, nor called back one single consolatory sentence. Nor does he lack any power. It is the God that made the heavens and the earth who has spoken this. Can you have any doubt? 
nor can he fail in wisdom as to the time when he will bestow the favors, for he knows when it is best to give and when it is better to withhold. Therefore, seeing that it is the word of a God so true, so immutable, so powerful, so wise, I will and must believe that the promises he has given are all true. If we thus meditate upon the promises and consider the promiser, we shall experience their sweetness and obtain their fulfillment. It's not as though we take a dead object and then we apply some faith to it and create some stew with which we take a pot and we throw in the water of the word and we throw in a promise here and we throw in a scripture there and we stir it all up and then we boil it down to its bare essence so that we would have something that we could call palatable and we throw a little salt and a little pepper and then we've got our own little stew of our own bowl and we dole it out as much as we want and then we take what we choose and leave out the rest because that's not what Spurgeon was saying. The reality is, is that we have precious promises that God has promised to everyone in the volume of the book and in contained without, through, throughout the scriptures. And God chooses his way, his time, and his will to fulfill those promises in you. Now they encourage you, and there's a certain blessing of knowing them when you find them because then God is revealing them to you about himself that he is someone that could be trusted for all that he has said to you each and every day of your life. That in the morning, in the noon, in the night, in the time that you spend with him as you hear him speak through his word, and also even audibly if he chooses to so do so, that he is faithful to himself. That whatever he has said, he does. And what he has promised or what he has said, that he will do. So you can count on something beyond yourself. You can count on something beyond a written word. You can count on God himself to do that which he said he will, not only written to you, but spoken through you by his Holy Spirit as he applies it to your life in his timing, in his purpose, in his plan, in his will, and in his way. His promises all come true. You don't have to wish upon a star. You have Jesus, 